Mr. Day, can you please tell the public who that you and I want him position blue? My name is uh, Ron Day. I'm the chairman of uh, Mariam Council. Why you been getting yourself involved inside law, public government uh, politics? I will get involved with the polit well, law politics. Uh, we call them island politics. I get involved there because uh, I feel this kind of something, something must be done here in Torres Strait. And uh, uh, particularly Murray Island here, uh, things are going to be done sort of that fast as the world is going traveling and Australia is moving at the same speed. And we seem to be standing at one place there. And, uh, I've been left my job down south and I thought I'd come here to help uh, work with people, try and uh, make it some progress you know, the community. That's why I feel strongly that I must get involved, whether I like it or not. I just get involved with the politics. To start, I don't, be, I don't, I don't really want to get involved there because I don't want to play the game of politics. Politics is too complicated for me, but I feel that uh, I'll try just to get in there to satisfy the needs of people. Can you tell me about some of the changes that uh, have been taking place on Murray Island more than a few years ago? Well, <clears throat> if we got some changes that we take place, uh, like uh, we got a new council chamber built now, uh, we got a water supply we got through here, or we put a constructed new uh, reservoir, and uh, uh, all the pipes around the village here, the town, up to the, and all we got the new uh, pumps, so we work by uh, uh, solar powered. Uh, these are the changes that will take place here and uh, plus we've got all machinery that we come inside. Well, if you come, if this, uh, if your question, uh, I want to compare this today to the past. But the past, uh, people may be proper understand the real uh, uh, people never really there at that speed or that. Or that or, uh, the world, but now nowadays the, because of that uh, technology got proper fast like, like this world we me today, I feel that uh, Murray Allen should get up and do something now. You know, like uh, this change he done he, he no comparison for them people down south there. And, you know, people down south. Once you make small mistake, you got big complaints come up, and here we don't make noise. So I feel that you know the first time that when when I get inside of politics is to make noise, and. The changes will be happen, as far as I can see, not enough. It's not enough the changes because as far as to meet the needs and not the want, want of the people here. So the changes, as far as I can see, it need to be developed more in this community. What am you like to see go happen, Lord, this place, and how soon? <clears throat> it's a very good question there. I'd, I, I, I would like to see something people do their own businesses, an enterprise of some sort where people will uh, uh, you know, do employments here. Uh, like uh, now, not now, this kind of time now, everybody work in Dole, and Dole money is just a government handout as far as I can see. I like to see an enterprise of like fishing, fishing enterprise. I like to see a freezer here, I like to see a boat, that carry people out, you know, fishermen out to the reefs to f do fish overnight out there, come back here. Because you've got potential here, but uh, it's just uh, not enough um, government backup bike of people here. I, I don't know why. The, way, the only way that I can think of is because uh, we're so remote, because of the remoteness, that's why government you forget that people live here in this part of the country. But uh, I would like to see, well, there are some people only, only like to start up their own business, but they don't know where to start. You see, and we got our uh, our government departments and Aboriginal Islanders agencies. They they come in with uh, financial support. They say they promise us that yes, we can support you or anything you want to do, any business and things like that. But when you come to apply for money. They always got some excuses just to get get you away from, uh, you know, get, uh, lose your interest. 
about this enterprise, uh, I'd really like to see this thing happen sometimes in the near future. Because, uh, yes, we have got a fertile soil. The land is full of uh, volcanic soil here. You know, we can plant we can plant any crops, any tropical fruit you can, you can plant here. But the thing is, you can't market it because the area is too small for it. Uh, but when you look at uh, exports from Torres Strait, uh, you're looking at the, the, the water. And if people, uh, bureaucrats especially, if all you look at, if all you look at um, the water as being a main resource for the Torres Strait Islanders, they should reconsider or consider very seriously what, what can be done in the water. Because people here are traditionally and also um, commercially uh, only uh, educated in fishing, you know. They know how to fish, they know where the grounds are, they know everything. But when you got people sitting in their comfortable office, they just feel, oh, what's the good, what, what's the good giving people money out there because we, we're not sure what's going to happen. And they forget that they should send people out to check every now and again what is really happening. That's why I feel that it should guard some kind of enterprise here, or project, people to work for their wage. Mr. Chairman, you got any comments for McKim, especially low health and uh, education? I find, it, I find it rather disappointing that uh, people will only get involved in low health. We got Aboriginal Islanders health team, but I'm, I'm disappointed that they, they don't come every now and again to visit all the islands in the Torres Strait. They, they stationed Law Lo Ti, and I don't know what they really do, because if they come out and explain to people, and then we'd know, oh yes, these are the people who explain how health is supposed to be, how people are supposed to live and eat, you know, what's a good diet for everyone, things like that. Uh, I think now, now, nowadays we've got a big problem with health in the Torres Strait, and because how, how can you solve the problem by sitting down in one place there? You can only solve the problem if you come out to the communities and really meet people, talk to people, and that way you can learn what the problems are. That's health. And, and that health it leads to people getting sick. And people getting sick in the communities, we got nurses, they, they, they do some training uh, in the hospitals, uh, General Hospital and TI. But still, if something they're not sure, they always ring to the, uh, the doctors in TI. And sometimes people are in a point of death where the doctor, the hospital have to charter a plane to come out here. And in some, some incident, the plane will land here just after the man died. And uh, we should think of some other alternative to make people feel that, yes, to educate people in that field uh, so that they know uh, how to go about, you know, uh, buying the right foods and things like that. Like I was saying before about this, uh, the, la the island itself, we plant every, uh, any tropical food that you can think of, it's planted here. People are relying on that money now and feel that they don't want to go plant anymore because they got the money to order stuff from from down south or TI. Uh, that at the same time, when you get to stop to the store, you get those people who, are who, are pl who were planting before, they go now to the store to buy all them things. And when you buy your veggie, fruits and veggies from the store, you can al you also buy things like uh, soft drinks and corned beef, tea, and all these. I, I, the main thing that I'm talking about is the getting stuff from, the, from TI uh, or down south instead of planting it here and hunt your own fish, fresh meat, every day. Uh, education. Now, education is a disaster, as far as I can see. Uh, you get, you get, th those educators who've been here before, they be first thing, uh, disrupt this idea of language. Now that the language is very hard spoken here in this community, is slowly dying out. You've got people like uh, Peter Wickham and Ruth here. They're trying to you know, revive this thing. But I'm looking at the past where 
in this community, uh, we got a unique language, and because of this language, because of the educators before, they be separate the language. They be say that you can't speak language here in, at school because it's against their policy. And now they feel that you should speak Creole so that it be an access to uh, better English. But as far as we understand it now, uh, it, it was not supposed to be Creole, it was supposed to be our own language so that you can always uh, get the meaning of whatever is said in English to our language or understand it through, through our own language. And this has been a problem we created from then until now. Now children are finding it hard because when you get to school you have to speak English all day and English is not our language. So after now you see the children going out to TI in a hope that, uh, oh yes, you do well at school. But at the same time, there is a language problem. At the same time, there is a, uh, a gap, a, a long gap between parents, teachers and children. You see, you've got teachers and children over there and you've got parents over here. Parents don't know what's happening. When children come back, they say, you know, uh, How did you go in school? Oh, very good, very good indeed. But when you come to see the reports, I, I've been through it and I checked through it. I said, oh no, that's not it. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money, government money. It's a waste of uh, energy that people are spending, you know, in every day teaching in classroom. So education is one big problem that I see, I personally see here, not only on this island here, but in all Torres Strait. Uh, our leaders were pushing to, towards something, something big, something like independence. And we need to get our people educated so that they could meet the dangers of... Uh, they will be equipped you not know, to meet the dangers of uh, independence. Uh, but now we have people traveling around, coming around, visiting here and back again. But as far as I can see, they come around just to tour, in a tour, to see around the place, back again. Most of them come around to tell you what to do, how to do it, and they go back without learning the problem. And I was talking to one of them. I said, look, you come here, I expect you to sit and listen to me so that I can give you my problem, and then you can bring it back to your department and, you know, work on it. But this is, a, this is how they work. And it's a waste of time, like I said. My uh, education here, is a little bit low. It's a little bit low from the one in TI <coughs> and down south in the mainstream. Now, how do you expect a, ch a child from this community to the university? There's no way in the world until the stages are all the same, standards are all the same, so that they can have the access to further studies in you know, big institutions like in universities or TAFE or, you know, tertiary education. Mr. Chairman, also on behalf of the public, I as well you who answer every question for me. How is well? How is well? That's all.